All right, welcome everyone. We'll get started in just a moment here, just giving people a chance to get their audio um, dialed in. All right, that's pretty good critical mass. So uh, before I hand it off to today's uh, moderators and presenters, I just wanted to cover a few technical details. Yeah. Uh, this is Zoom webinar, it's not Zoom meeting. Uh, and that means that you can't be seen or heard. So you don't have to worry about interrupting us but it does mean that uh, your interactive options are limited. So you can use the chat. If you want everyone to see your message, you'll have to select all panelists and attendees from the drop down there. Uh, otherwise only we will see it. Uh, if you have questions, the Q and A is a great feature for that one. You can upvote existing questions. You can add comments to existing questions and it's easier for us to manage uh, as we get towards that Q and A section. And then finally, if you want to speak your mind at, um, you know, during that open session, you can use the hand raise feature and I'll go through and unmute you in the order that the hand was raised. Uh, but otherwise, that's how we'll handle all the interaction. This webinar is being recorded. You can use the same link that you use to access this live version to watch the stream once we conclude. So uh, without further ado, I want to hand it off to uh, Bianca Thompson-Owen. Bianca. Good afternoon. My name is Bianca Thompson Owen and I am the chair for the Black Caucus. Today, I have the pleasure of welcoming you to ACRO's Reflection on Juneteenth, the history, celebration, forging forward, presented to you on behalf of the Black Caucus. Throughout the session, we encourage you to ask questions via the chat box or Q&A. We will engage in answering all questions after the presenter has completed his presentation. Without further ado, I'd now like to introduce Dr. Wendelin Davis, Transfer Center Director at the University of Knoxville, Tennessee, and the Vice Chair for Excellence, Policy, and Advocacy for the Black Caucus. Dr. Davis will introduce the presenter for this webinar. Thank you, Dr. Davis. Thank you, Bianca. Uh, and hello, everyone. I'm excited to be here. Uh, I would like to introduce to you Dr. Willie D. Davis, Jr., uh, also referred to as Baba Kubwa Kweku. Um, he is a professor at Lansing Community College and at Davenport University. Uh, Dr. Davis has his PhD in International and Comparative Education from Michigan State University and has taught for 50 years in 15, 50 years, 14 in the K through 12 system to include founding Pamoja Nashule, which is Saturday school in Swahili for neighborhood children and 40 years as an adjunct professor. He spent 40 years in public health as a, as a consultant in areas of health education, statistics, chronic disease control, community organizing, quality control for Medicaid screening and minority health. He has published in several journals and books and has traveled extensively to Africa and the Caribbean, as well as to Australia, Europe, South America, and Asia, gathering material for the All Around the African World Museum and Resource Center, of which he is the curator and director. He has also served as a board member of an African-centered school named X, El Haj Malik El Shabazz for 25 years, and in the naming of a street, Malcolm X Boulevard in Lansing, Michigan. He has coordinated tours to Tanzania and Jamaica and helped develop sister and friendship city relationships in Ghana and Tanzania, respectively. He retains active membership in many African and African-American organizations and others, including the Lansing Juneteenth Scholarship and Education Committee, and enjoys the distinction of attending as a vendor for every Juneteenth celebration. And I will add, I have the distinction of being able to call him dad. So uh, introducing to you, Dr. Willie Davis, Baba Kubwa Kweku. Hey. Uh, greetings, greetings, everyone. How's everybody doing today? Okay, I should say, Barry, can you hear me? Uh, uh, am I muted? Yeah. Oh, 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 you can hear oh, you, Dr. Oh, Davis. Okay, yeah. okay. <laughs> oh, I'm clear. Oh, okay. But anyway, I want. Uh, but but such is not the state of the case. I say it with a sad sense of the disparity between us. 
I am not included within the pale of glorious anniversary. Your high independence only reveals the immeasurable distance between us. The blessings in which you this day rejoice are not enjoyed in common. The rich inheritance of justice, liberty, prosperity, independence bequeathed by your fathers is shared by you, not by me. The sunlight that brought light and healing to you has brought stripes and death to me. This 4th of July is yours, not mine. You may rejoice, I must mourn. This was by Frederick Douglass in 1852 after the Fugitive Slave Act where slaves were allowed to be captured and taken back to the South of 1850. And, he, and this was on July 5th. And this is what African-Americans celebrated um, as their, you might say, 4th of July, but they didn't want to clash with the 4th of July of American uh, independence. And he was showing his displeasure with the fact that when the Emancipation Proclamation, or if we look at back the Declaration of Independence was passed, it really did not include African Americans who were at that time by the Constitution, early Constitution was three fifths of a person. So did not even constitute a person, nor did Native Americans, nor women at all. And so he was expressing his great disappointment at how can we celebrate this 4th of July. But that came after a long history of displeasure with what was happening um, in, 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 in America. And so we look at Juneteenth itself it's being established in 1866, but there was a, a at least the first celebration, although it was in 1865, but there was a history of African Americans resistance to what was called slavery or enslavement, rather than classifying people as slaves and people being uh, saying that they were descended from slaves, they were descended from people who were enslaved. And of course, there had been a long history of Africans coming here to America. They actually came before Columbus. I've even Sernema wrote a book called They Came Before Columbus, where he documented uh, not only plants, fruits, people, uh, ships, et cetera, that had came here before uh, Columbus. And there are actually in Mexico, huge stone heads that are over 2000 years old uh, as part of the old Mexico civilization, which was distinctively African. So there were Africans here on this shore before what was called 1619, when, when indentured servants, some say, some called enslaved Africans landed at Fort Comfort uh, in Virginia. And of course, there had been slavery from the Spanish and the Portuguese here actually starting in 1504. So it had been kind of a long, long history of these relationships between Africans and what we call the Americas uh, uh, here too. In fact, there were a number of slave revolts. There are about 350, the first one recorded uh, in 1663 uh, with indentured servants, white indentured servants, as well as, as, as black enslaved Africans. And of course, there were also, that one of my friends was, was uh, relating to me, there were also some white slaves in America that I hadn't realized. And some owned actually by free Blacks uh, as, as well, too. You had another rebellion in 1739, 1787. Uh, again, you had, uh, again, a narrative of Okada Equiano, who was a sailor who looked at the Middle Passage as part of the enslavement uh, experience as well. You had churches, the African Methodist Church in 17, Episcopal Church in, uh, in 1794. And we move on with the first African American newspaper, the Freedom Journal, which actually circulated not only in 11 states and districts of Columbus, but also Haiti. And Haiti is of importance because it became the first uh, African American or African society to become uh, independent in 1804. And we still have issues today as well with Haiti. But this paper was in the District of Columbus, Europe, as well as in Canada. And of course, we had Nat Turner. And then we also look at uh, the, uh, uh, the ship. Uh, the, oh Lord, what's my, <laughs> 
Ah, ha, 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 ha. What is the uh, Amistad in 1839, where many freed Africans were shipped back to the uh, continent of, of Africa? And we move on, 1849, Harriet Tubman escapes from slavery. Uh, a strong contemporary also of Frederick Douglass. He became a major conductor of the Underground Railroad, as well as an advocate for uh, human rights. And so we move on to John Brown, uh, a white male who conducted a raid at Harper's Ferry. And then we move on to, again, the Massachusetts 54th Regiment of African-American soldiers uh, was very important as well in the Civil War to 1863, the Emancipation Proclamation, and then two years later, the Civil War ends. And then we find we begin to celebrate uh, Juneteenth from, from that point in time. So if we look then going back to the origin then of Juneteenth, September 22nd, uh, 1862, uh, President Abraham Lincoln issued the Emancipation Proclamation that all enslaved persons in the Confederate states of Michigan in rebellion would be free. Now this excluded five states known as border states. And one of the reasons people had mentioned about Abraham Lincoln and his strong advocacy for the end of slavery, it was in many cases a wartime act so that the slaves could fight against the Confederate states if they were free from within the state. So again, you had several, uh, 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 one in, in, in course, Tennessee, uh, uh, where uh, Wendy is, Louisiana, uh, Kentucky, Maryland, Delaware, uh, and Missouri. So they later, once the 13th Amendment was passed, uh, became, uh, and, and after the Civil War, also became non slave uh, uh, states too. But of course, Texas was unusual. There was not a battleground. So people there held as slaves were not affected by the Emancipation Proclamation. People wonder why is it that it took them so long to learn that? But of course, they were not impacted by the Emancipation Proclamation, just as well as some of the other uh, uh, states too that were definitely in the Confederacy. Texas was not in it. And so again, you had a number of people because it was not part of the Emancipation Proclamation or part of the Confederacy. Many people migrated into Texas, bringing their slaves with them or the enslaved population. So then if we look at some important dates, again, that's September 22nd, the Emancipation Proclamation took effect in 1863. 1865, the 13th Amendment was passed in Congress officially abolishing the institution of, of slavery. Uh, if we still look at this, uh, much, much of this was still at, at the ending of the uh, Civil War. War and so there were still some battles that were going on as well too. Uh, again, earlier though in the nation's capital, April 16th, 1862, slavery was officially abolished. Although there were states, Massachusetts and other states that had abolished slavery in some of the years, uh, uh, some of the years before then. So again, uh, in, in Texas in 1866 was the, in Austin, Texas, was the very first celebration of June uh, 10th. And though it had been celebrated, you know, almost every year since then, it became official holiday, uh, June 3rd, 1979. Okay. And that has continued. At this very, very moment, the Senate has just passed a bill establishing um, Juneteenth as a national holiday, and they actually are meeting on it today. This could not be uh, more timely. It was actually a pass yesterday, and today they're actually discussing how they are going to uh, how, how they are going to do that. So, if we then look at how Juneteenth was expanded throughout this time, 2008, half of the states observed the holiday. As of 2014. 43 of the 50 states. I just checked too just today, there were four states that, that actually had not 
recognize it, Hawaii, Montana, North Dakota, and South Dakota. Montana has since did that. So only Hawaii, North Dakota, and South Dakota don't officially recognize uh, Juneteenth as Independence Day too. And Michigan here has, has had a lot to do with that. Barbara Rose Collins, who uh, was a Democratic uh, representative from Michigan in 1977, uh, introduced it to the House of Representatives, uh, House Bill 195, and uh, through Senate Joint Resolution and House Resolutions, uh, 1997, it was recognized as a national holiday. And today it's actually been passed as being officially uh, a, a national um, holiday. I have to check to see if that still has to be signed, et cetera, and so on too. So Juneteenth has become a very, very uh, important uh, activity, uh, especially not only for independence, not only being pride to African Americans uh, of their history, uh, not only uh, being used to deal with issues of diversity, looking at issues of reparations as well, uh, all of this has been included. We here in Lansing have been celebrating it since 19 uh, 93, so we're going on almost uh, 30 years. Michigan itself has been celebrating it as well for many years too. But there are a lot of activities that are part of the Juneteenth tradition. And uh, I had prepared a um, PowerPoint for you with much of this information, which I'm essentially going from uh, as, as well, uh, mainly because my memory is not as well as it used to be. So PowerPoint has been a great, 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 great savior uh, for me. But it always, always focuses on education and self-improvement. As, as uh, Wendy had mentioned before, I'm part of our uh, education committee here. And we've been here for 28 years and I've always had a booth there uh, as well. So not only education, self-improvement, but also economics has also been one of the key components of Juneteenth. Uh, activities as well. Also, it does look at look at it from a cultural aspect, of course, of respecting our elders and looking at the past. And then prayer has also been a great point with it. In fact, Frederick Douglass was very, very upset when he gave that speech at the clergy because the clergy uh, had, in many cases, supported the uh, institution uh, of slavery. So again, that's key. And the, and the group that has really spearheaded that in Lansing uh, has been uh, the Methodist Church, Mass Memorial uh, Methodist Church. And it's really increasing. We now have four different groups here that are actually celebrating uh, Juneteenth. And I'm actually doing a presentation in Grand Rapids where I'm originally uh, from and where uh, Wendy was born. Uh, uh, and right outside in Wyoming is also celebrating it. So in just this year, I know personally of five different uh, Juneteenth celebrations and it may uh, be actually pushed because of the pandemic. And many people don't realize how much the pandemic has, has raised the disparities between ethnic groups uh, in terms of addition with health, in terms of employment. Uh, as you know, most of our essential workers have been those in the low income area and mostly minorities. So it has exposed the great many of the, the issues that impact us um, throughout. And of course, foods were also synonymous with Juneteenth. Uh, strawberry soda pop was is one of the traditional drinks for it. A barbecuing again, uh, again, sharing in spirits. And also too, the ancestors are also pulled in in some of the spiritual celebrations and whether or not they can actually smell this barbecue. And so the barbecue pit in many cases can be the center of attention and many of these Juneteenth celebrations too. The dress is also an, an element as, as well. Uh, again, during slavery, there were laws on the books in many areas that prohibit, prohibited or limited the dressing of the uh, enslaved. Again, two former slaves tossing their ragged garments into the creek to adorn clothing taken from the plantations, again, belonging to their uh, former masters. Okay, And then there are some other facts about 
the Emancipation Proclamation itself. Lincoln actually issued the Emancipation uh, Proclamation uh, uh, twice, uh, uh, later in uh, 1862 as well. And of course, it became official in, in January 1st of 1863. I mentioned before, it only applied to those states in rebellion. And many people have actually questioned in many cases, uh, Lincoln's, um, Lincoln's resolve around the issue of slavery. He had actually made the statement because of his love of the union that if he could have maintained the union and allowed slavery, he, he would have too. Uh, again, uh, the union victory, uh, uh, the Sharpsburg and the battle over Tedum uh, gave the union essentially the victory to issue the Emancipation Proclamation. They had to make sure that they were seen as being uh, successful in terms of trying to maintain uh, the union too. There was again a firm demonstrations of the president's executive uh, war powers as well. And again, it changed the focus of the war, mainly because so many now uh, African Americans became soldiers and they will also fight against their former uh, uh, in, enslavers. It also prevented involvement of foreign nations uh, in the Civil War. If we even look back at the Revolutionary War, um, the uh, many African Americans joined the British because they were uh, enslaved and they were fighting against the uh, uh, slave masters. <clears throat> so so you, you can see how foreign nations could become involved uh, in these particular uh, issues as, as well. And again, it helped to pave the way or continue African-Americans fight uh, for their freedom led to the uh, total abolition of slavery in the United States. And again, Lincoln considered it as his crowning achievement uh, of, of his presidency. So now what does that mean for uh, uh, us today? Um, we, we, we can look at, again, the proliferation of the cries uh, for freedom and expanding, you know, as I mentioned today, a number of people celebrating uh, Juneteenth. We see that it has actually impacted our Congress also to uh, make it again a national holiday rather than the states accept, uh, accepting it. We see now Montana has joined it. It has begun to probably to try to heal some of the wounds uh, that have existed uh, throughout our history between African Americans and others. It also give other groups, uh, especially like Black Lives Matter, uh, Me Too movement, a lot of, 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 of fodder for looking at how people become free from some of their, not only their involvements, but also some of the, uh, removing some of the disparities in health and economics, and also uh, looking at cultural activities as well. It also, it also bodes well for uh, international freedom areas, especially dealing with issues of Haiti. Haiti has now become, in fact, uh, under the Biden administration, uh, many of the uh, refugees from Haiti no longer will be deported uh, back uh, to Haiti. And of course, uh, when we look at the issue dealing with the issue of reparations, which is becoming front and center, and many people don't realize there are already several instances of reparations. Um, the town right outside of Chicago is actually using the sale of uh, uh, and the tax on marijuana to support uh, reparations for the African uh, uh, mayor. I think it's, um, I think it's Ellsworth, Illinois. And so we're seeing that happen. We're seeing it in Kansas City. We're also seeing it in Chicago. We're actually seeing people using events like this to, uh, to impact uh, our local communities, our, our city governments, in terms of looking at these issues uh, that, that impact us. And of course, it takes us on into uh, uh, what is the, the striving of human of human and the nature of humans to essentially to be free. And one of the things too that was said that if you don't remember your history, you are bound to repeat it. So again, it keeps in focus some of the issues. One of the things that the Chinese had 
Uh, they still have in China and go many places. There are still signs that say no dogs or Chinese allowed, which showed how the Europeans uh, treated the Chinese and they leave those signs there so they never forget, you know, uh, you know that they must also maintain eternal uh, vigilance. And so for these reasons, June uh, 10th is here and uh, hopefully always uh, here to stay. And especially for the, you could say the, uh, of our equivalent of the 4th of July. Okay. So I hope I've been informative. <laughs> any, any, any questions? Thank still you. here? Okay. Yes, we're still here. Thank you so much. I'm just looking at the chat to see if we have any questions going through. Okay. We actually do have a question. Okay. How do we continue the conversation and history of African American history and Juneteenth when individual states are passing laws allowing it not to be taught in public education? What is the best way to amplify voices and facts and history with state resistance? You're saying the 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 uh, uh, schools not want to do the critical race theory. Is that what the question is? How do we combat that? Okay. Well, again, uh, eternal uh, diligence. What, what what you're doing today? You know, this needs to be sent into the uh, you know school system. One of the things about Michigan, Michigan has a has a, a strong, even though not always used, uh, uh, African-American and African component of both their uh, uh, bench, that benchmark system here for public education. So it's act actually included at the state level. And of course, there have been a number of battles to actually to get that, take that out of the curriculum. But of course, all of this has to go to public hearings. So people have packed the public hearings to make sure that that uh, has not been done. And so uh, where, where you are, uh, you know, if they change it, it has to be done some somehow through some type of public hearing or through some type of committee status to do it. So it's important to link the community uh, to that. But one of the things that we look at here in Lansing is good. We have three African-American uh, local newspapers. And so when any of these issues come out, we, we have uh, people to support it. We also have uh, state representatives like Sarah Anthony who also uh, looks at it. I mean, there's been a, not only is that there that push against in the curriculum in the community, there's, there's a, a state statue or a, a monument to Malcolm X, because you know Malcolm X was actually raised in Lansing and somebody just ran over it. You know, so as we see some of the monuments being pushed down for the, uh, that deal with the Confederacy, we're also seeing those that promote diversity also uh, being attacked as, as well. So what it really just people just have to, to go out and work. And again, you know, uh, looking at groups like uh, Black Lives Matter, uh, looking at the reparations movement, all these can be all this can be incorporated into each of those groups because those groups are also looking at those issues. So, so the key is to find uh, local support as well. Now, if there's no local support, you might have to go on out there on your own. But again, you've got the newspapers and uh, and, and hopefully, uh, you know, as African American newspapers as well, or do articles within the local newspaper uh, as well for your support on that. And, and again, there's there's national. Uh, groups. There's many groups that are are looking at those issues. Groups like the uh, um, uh, the um, uh, I think it's AHA is it's a African American mental health uh, group that actually looked at helping to develop curriculum packages uh, for students, as well as multicultural education efforts in various states. 
Thank you so much, Dr. Davis. That was All very right. well stated. There's another question. Uh, this holiday has been around for a long time. Why are more people suddenly learning about it and celebrating it now? Um, I, if I were to think one of the biggest impacts has been the pandemic. As I said, last year, uh, just within um, my area, within a 60 mile radius, I know of, of five different, um, probably six celebrations when last year there were two. And, and it's directly, I think, it's impact by the, the issues dealing with race. And I think George Floyd probably has very, uh, the death of George Floyd has, has galvanized, I think, a worldwide effort to, uh, to look at, at uh, not only the celebration of African-American holidays, but African-Americans uh, in, in general uh, and the issues that they, so I think all of that has, has impact. I think there's also uh, uh, an adrenaline rush to do something after the pandemic as well too, because it seems to be subsiding. And so people are becoming very, 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 very lively. But I am impressed. I, I, I was just shocked that, uh, that in Lansing here, uh, I thought there was one group that was funny about it. People were saying, well, why aren't they with the, the group who's already doing it? And I, I got in a big discussion. Let's have more. We don't just have to have one group do it all. And there are three others, Russ, right here in Lansing that are celebrating uh, Juneteenth. So, and we've seen that uh, around um, Martin Luther King's birthday as well, too, an upsurge uh, um, and people becoming more and more involved in these activities. Now, I can say that around this area. I don't know if that's universal, but I can see that too. But of course, you know, we're unique. We're part of the uh, un underground world. People don't really realize that from Chicago to Detroit, uh, uh, Highway 94, that's actually the pathway of the Underground Railroad. And so when we come to Detroit, uh, and then Canada's right across the border. So many came through Detroit and many settled in Detroit or went through Port Huron or came through this particular area, almost up that same highway. So, so this area has been there. And then of course, you give me a chance to speak about Detroit. And uh, Detroit is again, the most revolutionary black city we've ever had. The Nation of Islam started there, the Shrine of the Black Madonna, the Black Christian Nationalists, uh, the Republic of New Africa, the first city of over a million people to have an African-American president. So, so Detroit, and there's actually two underground railroad, uh, uh, um, what should I say? They actually take you through it at two of the churches there. And again, you can see the church, the churches have been very, 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 very key in the celebration uh, of, of Juneteenth. Thank you so much, Dr. Davis. There is another question coming from our Q&A. Where I live in Gainesville, Florida, they closed their city offices today in observance to Juneteenth, which is beautiful. Sadly, many opposed to this deemed this a political stunt and let their true racist feelings be shown. This may be a larger question, but how do we combat this kind of hate and misinformation? The facts are out there on this, but how do we chip away? Uh, be, because it's, 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 it's known. Uh, my father went back south uh, after he turned 65 and I asked him why. And when he came to Grand Rapids, he brought us to Grand Rapids, there was a black police chief, but he couldn't arrest anybody white. I don't know if you guys saw Harlem Nights that they did that in that movie there too. And so he, and he always said that uh, he went back to South because he wanted to face that racism straight up that, uh, uh, rather than people doing it, stabbing you in the back, doing it behind your back or hiding your hand, he wanted to face it. And I really see that happening now. I think this, particularly this last administration has made it very raw, the uh, hatreds, you know, the disparities between people. So it's out here that we can face it now. So I think we're actually in a perfect situation. So um, so it's good that that was brought up and you really see the opposition toward it because now you know who your opposition is. 
because in my opinion, they've been thinking that all the time, but now because they feel that, that their, that their uh, way of life is being threatened, you know, they're coming out, but good, it's out in the light. So now we can actually deal with it now. So I kind of look at that as, as in many ways as a positive that you are actually bringing it out and you can't deal with it unless it's brought out. Absolutely agreed, absolutely agreed. Here's another question. What can those who are outside of the Black community who want to be allies do to celebrate or commemorate this event? Uh, 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 come to it, be part of the committee structures. One of the things about most, most African-American groups, they're not exclusory. Uh, you really don't, in many cases, you don't really have to, uh, uh, to uh, I used to say about, uh, uh, there, there were talks that Black folks didn't get together. And I said, well, uh, I don't know. I, said, I don't know of any Black business that ever existed without Black patronage because white people don't come, <laughs> you know? So, and, and, and so if, if they want to become involved, they, 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 but, but I guess the point I'm making is white folks aren't excluded. You know, they just don't come you know, but they're open for white participation. You know, in fact, people are glad that they come because they now realize that, that, uh, that, that all of us are involved in this. That's why I like what happened. Uh, I looked at the youth behind uh, George uh, Floyd. I mean, most of the people in the Black Lives Matter that were marching were white. They showed what they believed in, they came. And so the opportunity is, is, is there to uh, uh, participate. You know, nobody tells you you can't come in. Thank you so much. Okay. And this is the last question we have here, not unless okay. there are others. Um, how can we incorporate Juneteenth celebrations on our college campuses? Um, hmm. Well, uh, we have at at, at Lansing uh, Lansing Community College, and I hope I'm, I, I I think just things that work just so well here. Uh, last year, uh, we were celebrating the 1619, we have between our Black History Month uh, uh, committee and our uh, 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 1619 committee, 16 different events that celebrated. Uh, uh, African Americans, and one of them is, and one of the things that we used to do at every Juneteenth, we would set up a booth from the college to recruit students. You know, uh, they stopped that in more recent years, but that's something that hopefully we can come back to. And now we've decided that we're now a part of every Juneteenth uh, uh, committee too. And uh, so, so the so that way the college is, is involved as well too. So I'm not sure what Michigan State is doing, uh, but uh, Lansing Community College uh, is is involved. So someone has to to. Uh, you always need somebody who's going to, to, to push the, you know, push the agenda. And, and, and I, and I find that, 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 that's happening uh, more and more. And I, and I see a lot of youth, a lot of youth are becoming involved. So we have to make sure that they know of these community events. That's why I like the idea of, 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 of Lansing Community College because community is in it. And so we try to make that live. And so that would be something that the universities as well uh, could try to just enhance their uh, community activity and seek out, uh, uh, you know, uh, ethnic organizations, you know, ethnic newspapers and, and so on. Okay, we have two more questions in the chat. Okay. One question, if possible, Going off the celebrating on college campus question, what are good methods to bring awarenesses in offices and business? Uh -huh. um, said, uh, what's that last part? What was that last part? How can we bring awareness of Juneteenth to our offices and businesses? Uh, at the college level or office and businesses. 
I think in, in general. All in general. Is- but, you know, I had another issue, too, about the colleges. We get uh, Olivet College actually sponsors uh, for our Juneteenth committee about three full scholarships to Olivet College based upon our educational activities. I forgot about that the education group. And so we get so so we offer about five or six scholarships uh, of, uh, from uh, of students coming out of high school to some of the colleges in the area. So that's another instance of, of one of the colleges is, is being there. So so if we bring this, one of the things that especially business, uh, one of the things that I put my hat on ever since We've had our Juneteenth celebration. Um, I've had my business there. And, uh, you know, I sell African uh, dashikis and also African uh, jewelry. And I go in with a couple others and we actually have a booth. And that's economic part of it uh, as well. One other way would be to enhance many businesses. Uh, People don't really realize there are more percentage-wise startup of African-American businesses than white businesses. They tend to fail at a higher rate because in many cases, they don't necessarily have all of the economic uh, resource, but the entrepreneurial spirit is there. And, you know, there are a lot of people who sell things on the side, jewelry and other things. So whenever we have a Black Business Expo at, 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 at LCC, we have a lot of community-based businesses there. So a lot of people have these side businesses. So that'd be one way to approach it through the vendor uh, uh, effort uh, uh, as, as well. We also have sponsors uh, for our Juneteenth from many businesses uh, as, as well uh, uh, in the area and most of the larger business support. So, so, so we have a strong uh, uh, linkage also with the city uh, of Lansing that allows uh, us to uh, solicit a lot, a lot of the uh, companies and businesses uh, to be involved. And of course, if they have African-American clientele, that's also impressed on uh, as well on them. So, so, so you you'll find in a, a number uh, all of the ones that I've seen here so far, uh, uh, they're all supported by uh, uh, a lot of major businesses within the community, especially if a lot of their clientele uh, is are black. Thank you. And we have one more question. Okay. Um, do you know why Juneteenth has not become a national holiday? I think it was just passed through the Senate, though. Yeah, yes, oh, yes, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, it was just passed. I was just gonna, just gonna see if if, 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 if I had it here, just, just, just that I could uh, I'll read it off. Let's see. Yeah, today, Senators Marque Smith. Corning and Representative Jackson Lee, an activist, hold press conference to celebrate Senate passes of legislation to commemorate Juneteenth as a national holiday. And that's dated today. And it actually uh, convened at 1.30. Okay. So, wow. so, so that question, you know, seems to be answered. But I need to see, we know the Senate passed it. Uh, and I'm sure the House passed it. But I wonder if this, if, if it needs a, a, a signature uh, 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 to it. But but it was unanimously passed by the Senate. Okay. So uh, so I, I, so so we 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 have it through the House and the Senate. So hopefully uh, it, it will be signed if if it does need signature. So today's a mighty day. You guys have picked the the best day of the year to celebrate uh, Juneteenth. Awesome. And the question to that is also these relatives who seem who don't seem to care or acknowledge these holidays. Well, um, well. What what can I say other than just keep impressing upon them and 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 you know and uh, if, if you guys get my uh, PowerPoint uh, pass it around you know you know and, and and it's there so that if you guys want to use it you know is 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 as well and, and for me historically um, uh, 
one of my greatest heroes was George Washington Carver because, you know, out of all his inventions, he never got any money from it. He thought it was God's gift to him to be able to give that to the world, you know. So I kind of like to follow that. So 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 I, I, I'm not as... Uh, I don't own anything, you know, so if anybody wants to use that PowerPoint uh, to do their own uh, Juneteenth celebration, you know, the, there's the background to it as well as as points that people uh, uh, can use. Thank you so much, Dr. Davis. There right. are no other questions. All right. well, yeah, um, I, I see 64 people here. So that means we got 64 presentations to give. <laughs> Absolutely, absolutely. We thank you so much, your wealth of knowledge, your wealth of information. We were truly blessed to have you today all and right. share your knowledge with us. Mm -hmm. um, I think all of us will go back to our college campuses, to our relatives, um, be allies, be accomplices for those of us who are not a part of the Black community to make sure that the word gets out. Thank you again, and thank you all for attending this conference and this webinar. Uh, we invite you to keep a lookout on other events that are sponsored by ACRO as well as the Black Caucus. Enjoy your day, and thank you so much again, Dr. Davis. Oh, you're more than welcome. And Sunday, Wendy, Sunday. of course, we've got to thank you. What a dynamic <laughs> father-daughter duo. Um, uh -huh. Both Dr. Dr. and Dr. Davis, thank you so much. Your legacy, Dr. Davis, is living on in Wendelin right now. She is a dynamic member of ACRO, and we thank her as well. Uh, and she's participated with me in a lot of things. You know, we, you know, we kind of started the organization to try to to uh, get the crack out of our neighborhood too. You know, they actually did a newspaper article on us. You know, so she's always been my backup. And she mentioned about the trip to Tanzania uh, that I took a group of people. She actually set it up. Yeah, she actually set it up for us. You know. So she's always been there for me, so. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you so much, everyone. And thank you again, Dr. Davis. Uh, thank you. Thank you. All right. All right.